By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I have a special episode for you because it is not me playing, it's actually two other players uh, going against, playing against each other, and that's uh, Richard. Um, he's playing a Singleton deck, and he's playing against Yoop, and he's playing a Merfolk deck. And here we see a picture of Richard's deck. It's a Singleton deck, so that's a lot of singles. And when you look carefully, you can actually see that this is a picture of two identical decks. So he made two identical decks, so he could play with this, and his buddy could play with this at the same um, meetup, because this was just a casual uh, meetup. So this is an interesting uh, mix of cards, and it's going to be... Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this deck will, will kind of work, if it will work, because when you only play with singles, of course, you have much less consistency. Then again, when I'm looking at these cards, all of them uh, are pretty decent and very playable cards. We also see a full set of Power 9, for example, in this Singleton deck. So it's not necessarily a weak deck. Now, for people that uh, have viewed Timmy Talks a lot for our regular viewers thank you for tuning in again but you'll probably recognize this deck because i've already featured a few matches with the singleton deck and he's playing against a deck that uh, hasn't been featured yet on the channel that and that is this merfolk deck so here we see a picture this the deck that Yoop is playing and it's blue with a little bit of green we see uh three berserks there we see a regrowth and besides that we just see a lot of merfolks but also some surrender gins and surrender Afrits. And the cool thing here is that uh, Yoop has chosen not to play with clones. Instead, he's playing with Dances of Many, which I think is quite original and quite nice to see that the Dark Clone in Shaman. He's also playing with that Merfolk Assassin, so that could be kind of fun. Not sure what he wants to do with that card, but, you know, we'll, we'll, I guess we'll see. We'll find out and see. And there's also an um, Old Man of the Sea talking about sea. And, of course, the Old Man of the Sea in the Sunken City. Maybe that's some, some interesting synergy. Um, so, okay, so this is his deck. We've seen Richard's deck. Let's go to game number one. Game number one, and it's Yoop on the right with the Timmy playmat. He's playing Merfolk, and it's Richard on the left, and he's playing his Singleton deck with the white sleeves. Not sure who's going to start here. It looks like they're both keeping their opening hand, and it looks like it's Yoop who's starting here. Look at that, a Mox Sapphire into a Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, and also that Factory, so a really good opening here for the Merfolk player. And there we see an Elves of Deep Shadow from Richard's side. Tapping for three here. Wow, look at that aggression. A Surrender Pafrit, so that's right on the aggressive kind of train kind of plan here and we see a chaos orb and after damage is dealt he's going to activate it there's that flip it's a hit it's all going very quickly but it's a hit so that surrender before is gone but he instantly he's casting a new one so there's another three four flyer powerhouse here and richard is playing a sword to plowsters again after he has received the damage no before he has received the damage, probably so that Yoop cannot counter. Because if he waits until Yoop gets the damage and he has two blue open to possibly counter. And look at that, another one, third Serendip. My goodness. And it looks like uh, Richard is not only facing the Serendip Jins, he's, only fa he's also facing a mana problem here. Look at that, a Sunken City. It's full powerhouse here. Wow, look at that Merfolk deck go. He's on six now. And he hasn't really done anything yet. Wow. Oh, a balance. That's one of the best cards he could have picked. Has to choose now what to do. Keeps the Mishra's Factory, which is completely understandable. And look at that. Richard is losing his entire hand. Taking the damage, paying the upkeep cost for the Sunken City. And they're discussing now what to do. So he's using the city to attack. And Richard said, you know what? That's, <laughs> that's game. You've got this. It's not going to happen. So that's a really quick uh, game number one. Wow. Um, okay, let's give these players some time to sideboard. And we'll get back to them in game number two. Game number two. So this time it's Richard on the play. 
Let's see if he can do something because that was pretty brutal that game one. But of course, Shub had a very good hand with all those Seren and Pefrits. And look at Richard go here. Mark Sapphire Tundra into a Felwer Stone. That's a pretty good opening. And of course, when you have an aggro deck like Yup and you, you're not on the play, that's already uh, that can already be kind of a problem here. We see a strip mine, which is pretty good. And there is some blue power here taking an extra turn. Finding his land drop, taking a damage here. Ooh, that's interesting. A demonic tutor. What is he going to tutor for? Usually people are tutoring for ancestral recalls. But maybe, who knows, maybe Richard is going to do something interesting. We'll just have to wait and see. I mean, there's a reason why people tutor for an ancestral recall. It's a fantastic card. So, I mean, I'm not saying that's a bad play. As a matter of fact, it's probably the best play. But it's what people do most of the time. Um, so, passes the turn to Yup here, and still the Felwer Stone cannot be used now because the Mishra's Factory generates colorless mana. Doesn't really seem to matter much though for Richard. Now the Felwer Stone is active, he's actually pointing at it, and there's now a Surrender Befreed on the other side of the table. Look at that, Yup actually has an Ancestral Recall, playing it out now. And there is a Sylvan, quick shatter here, taking care of that Mox. And I think Richard wants to stay ahead of the mana curve. Nice, playing the Time Twister. I'm liking this. And probably, uh, Richard, I mean, maybe you can comment when you're watching this. Probably you looked up the Time Twister, and I'm liking that play. I'm really liking that play, because you were, you were pretty low. Taking out, of course, the Time Twister. Don't shuffle that one back in. And uh, really nice to see this. Both players are getting a fresh hand. And it's, it's just nice to play this way, you know, to just to just go all in, not to play conservative. Because, you know, you're taking a risk, your opponent is playing an aggressive deck, he gets to draw seven new cards. And look at him go there, a Black Lotus, a Volcanic Island, look at how many, how much mana Richard has when you compare it to Yup, it's crazy. Cracking the Lotus, using the Felwer, play out an Icy Manipulator, oh, and look who's back, the Demonic Tutor again. That's just bad luck. So he can now look up. I think Yup is pointing that out. He can now look up the um, regrowth, regrowth the time twister. <laughs> I mean, that would be that would be really funny. Well, just you know, time will tell. He's now tapped out, passing turn. Yup gets a look at the top three cards because of the Sylvan. Gets to select one of them, playing a tropical island here. What will he do next? Is he just going to attack for two? Because the field is pretty open. And no, he's going to play a Psyblast. And Psyblast seems, just seems to be made to blow up Surrender Befreed's out of the air. I personally really love using my Psyblast to blow out Angels out of the air. It's just such a difference when you can deal 4 damage instead of 3. Wheel of Fortune! <laughs> oh, I'm liking this. Oh, Richard, man, I'm really, I'm really liking this. And I'm wondering, did you have your Wheel of Fortune and your Library of Alexandria already? You probably looked up one of the two of those two cards. Because now he has an active library, he has more mana, he has more cards. I just, I mean, this is going to be really difficult for you to uh, to win, actually. I mean, he hasn't lost yet, don't get me wrong, but Richard has a lot of control here. Look at that, Phantasmal Terrain on the library. Oh, I'm loving this game. Oh, <laughs> that's so much fun here. Playing an Ancestral Recall again. Wow. So I guess Richard is not the only one who's lucky. And, and such an explosive turn here for Yup has kind of catapulted him back into this game. And we're seeing two really good players playing against each other with the really cool decks. And there's a Curd Ape 2-3 because of the forests in play. There is a Birds of Paradise. It goes really fast here, but that's an Ice Storm. And another creature... Elves of Deep Shadow, and there's his Shatter, so wow. So just when you think Yup is kind of getting back into it, there's a lot of removal here from the side of Richard, and also he's tapping his Tropical Island, making sure that Yup doesn't have any green mana to use. And that's what I like about the Icy, it's, it's, it's a diversity, the flexibility of that artifact, it's really great. And let's see, I also like the fact that it's 
uh, costing four to cast but only one to use. So when you combine that with the workshop, for example, and there we see a Lord of Atlantis and we see the Merfolk Assassin. And of course the Merfolk Assassin is pumped here and has Island Walk, so it can, you know, it can kill itself, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if that's useful. But it has Island Walk and Elishard has multiple islands in play. And he's tapping that, attacking now, knowing that you probably won't sacrifice his Lord of Atlantis. So he's taking the damage, going to nine. And he, he needs to do something here. Of course, he can look at the cards. The thing is, he's too low to take extra cards, I feel. So that's probably not what he's doing. Playing a factory, that could be a blocker, at least for the Curd Ape. But of course, it still has Summoning Sickness now. Playing a Chaos Orb, he's going to flip. Flipping on the IC, he's hitting the IC. So that's pretty good news. And tapping to, there's the Sunken City. Attacking with both. I wonder if that's the right decision. Because now he's all open. And, you know, that means it's going to take 5 damage. You're going to 4. Maybe I would have played it a little bit more conservative. Then again, I don't have Yoop's hand. I don't know how, you know, I don't know what kind of choices he's making. So it's always difficult to to try to, to tell a player what to do when you don't know the situation. And let's see. I mean, maybe he has some tools here. Ooh, interesting. The Surrendip Jinn, and that's a 5-6 from Arabian Nights. It's a flyer for 4. It does have a downside. During your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a land. And if it's an island, it's going to deal 3 damage to you. And now he is playing a little bit more conservative here. Just attacking with that assassin that has still has Island Walk. And he has his factory still to, to activate. But if he activate it, activates it, he goes to 3 life. And that means that a Lightning Bolt will be enough to, to get kill here. So he's blocking, he's deciding not to block the Elves of Deep Shadow. I guess they're discussing, listen, oh, there was a Lightning Bolt there. Was there a Lightning Bolt? I guess there was a Lightning Bolt. Let, let's look back at what, what happened here in this play. Let's put this in replay. So here we see the replay. Let's see if we can spot a Lightning Bolt somewhere. So Yup is declaring blockers. And Richard is checking, are you not blocking my... Oh, there it is, on your left side. Okay. <laughs> I mean, that went fast, Richard. So congratulations, Richard. You're winning this one. It's a 1-1. One, one. So that means we get into game number three. Game number three. So it's 1-1 one, one here. Decisive match. Decisive game for the match, I should say. Yoop on the right with this Murfolk deck on the play. Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. Ooh, that's painful. We see, ooh, that's nice. Lord of Atlantis attack here for two, but of course at Library of Alexander turn one. That can be a game decider here. Because he can now dig for answers. There is a lightning bolt taking care of the Lord of Atlantis. Another attack. There's a Psy Blast. I mean, Yup is playing uber aggressively, as you should do with this deck. He realizes that, I mean, he's not going to win the card advantage train with that library on board here for Richard and he's taking his time now looking at how many cards he has in hand what to do finding a time walk so now you can see him taking over control of this match playing a Bayou again drawing an extra card I mean I think it's card like number four out of that Loa Playing the birds here and playing that Chaos Orb. So things are are not looking great. Of course, he can now at least attack with the Pearl Trident and the Factory if he doesn't have a play. He does have a play. I like this. Look at that shuffling away his own Berserk. And I'm liking how both of these players are playing. Like they're not, I mean, they're willing to take a risk. There's an attack, or there's an, uh, a new hand here for Yup looking at his cards. At least then he has seven cards in hand. Attacking. 
with the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident. Richard is on 12. Ooh, I think I see a mind twist in his hand. Oh no, oh no, oh no. If that's a mind twist, this can get ugly. There's a Mox Jet. I think there's the mind twist now. Oh my god. Oh my god. He gets to keep one lousy card. Oh my god. I th I mean, if you if you're still going to win this one, man, I mean, that would be a small miracle. Attacking or hitting him for 5. I mean, he is doing a pretty good job considering you know what he has to deal with here. I mean, Richard's on 7. Ooh, also his second piece, I just called him Black Power. Second piece here after the mind twist playing the demonic tutor. Ay 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 ay. And I mean, if you're Yoop, you must be thinking, oh man, is it? You know, it's one thing after another. But remember that Murfolk of the Pearl Trident. Ooh, he's lucky now as well. Finding his ancestral recall. Murfolk of the Pearl Trident has Island Walk, so he can hit him for two guaranteed. What else can he do? I mean, he has options. I thought the Mind Twist was going to be the decide decider here, but after the Ancestral Recall, I'm not sure, and Richard's on, on 7. He can attack with the Merfolk of Pearl Trident, cannot be blocked, so he can get him to 5. Of course, in response, Richard can use the Chaos Orb maybe to flip on the Lord of Atlantis and block the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident with the Suchi, so maybe attacking with the Merfolk of the Pearl Trident is not the best idea here. Interesting, 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 interesting. He's thinking what to do. He's playing a time walk. Ooh, maybe, I mean, maybe in this case he's attacking. He's saying, you know what, if you want to use your Chaos Orb on my lord and kill my merfolk, you just, you do it. You, you go for it. And that's exactly what he does. Boom, it's a full hit. I mean, Yoop knows what's what happens. He's not even waiting for Richard to declare the blocks. And, oh, look at that. A Serendip Jin. They're a 5-6 powerhouse from the Arabian Nights. Regrowth. Oh, ooh, on the Chaos Orb. And he's going to flip again. Oh, my. It, it, it's just one of those games that because Eddie Shard is drawing so many cards, he just has answers to everything here. And it's it's really nice to see. I mean, we kind of know what's going to happen here, probably. Um, he's just going to animate them. Just attack with everything. There's a flip. Jin's dead. What? Also a Shatter? Oh, that's brutal. That is brutal. That's the worst possible outcome here. And there is a Soul Ring. There is a Stone Rain. There is a... Oof. He's just... He's just wiped Yoop's board completely. All Yoop has is one single Merfolk Assess. And I mean, Richard's on four, but I think he's not going to make it. To make matters worse, an Urnum here on the board. I like this, though. This is interesting. Playing the Jin. This is going to be interesting. Attacking here. Blocking. I think he has to chump. Exactly. You have to chump block because he has to second island. And that's going to cost him three damage. So he's going to four because he has to second island here. Now he's going to attack. He's going to block. He's not, oh, he's not gonna make it, but that was such a cool game. That was so close. That was so close. Wow, and after that first game, I didn't think the Singleton deck would stand a chance against this very aggressive and cool Merfolk build. Um, wow, congratulations to Richard on winning. And here we see the winning deck, the Singleton deck. Very well done. Congratulations. And if you want to know more about this deck or ask Richard a question, you can see his Instagram handle here on the picture. So you can contact him via Instagram. For now, thank you for watching. And before we go away, I want to ask you for your attention for our Patreons because you can now support the show on Patreon. And uh, all my supporters, the people that support the show financially, are shown on the end scroll. So thank you very much 
to all my patrons for supporting the show and for everybody actually for watching, for enjoying this content and for all your positive feedback. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Somebody can see.